Hello. This video covers the basics of using your MBF system. We'll turn on the hardware, set a reference point, use the joystick to move around, and discuss a couple of popular options. Let's begin by making sure everything is turned on. You should see several power supply boxes connected to your system. Yours may look a bit different than the ones here. This is the microscope power supply. Let's turn it on first. We'll turn the scope itself on separately in a minute. Next, we'll turn on the Apatom power supply. This is only needed if you'll be working in fluorescence. Next, we'll turn on the fluorescent light source. In general, it's not a good idea to turn a fluorescent light source on and off quickly, although newer LED light sources are much better than the old metal halide lights. This is the stage controller. Make sure not to touch the joystick for at least 10 seconds after turning it on. Next, turn on your camera. The light on your camera should blink a few times, then turn on solid green. Some cameras don't have a power switch. They're simply on when your computer is turned on. For most configurations, the order you turn stuff on doesn't matter, but to be on the safe side, turn on your scope last. Once all the hardware is turned on, it's time to load your slide. If your microscope has an escape or load position, use that to load the slide. Holding the left-hand side of your slide, move it onto the right side of the slide holder. Use one finger to hold the right side of the slide in place. Pull back the lever arm to lock the slide into position. Double check that it's secure. If you put your scope in load position, remember to raise it back to working position before you launch the software. Use the joystick to move around so your tissue is positioned directly underneath the objective. Most joysticks have a turbo button that can be pressed that doubles the stage speed. Once your slide is loaded, double-click the desktop shortcut to launch the software. You'll be prompted to choose a group and a profile. Groups are typically your lab. Under the Profile drop-down menu, if you have more than one camera, you should see Color and Monochrome listed. Use Color for bright field work and Monochrome for fluorescent work. Once the software loads, you'll see a blank screen. Don't panic. Just move your mouse up to the Acquire tab here, and then look for the Sequences drop-down. This Sequences drop-down should have things that control hardware, like moving around your slider to send the light to the eyepieces or to the camera. Choose Camera or Bright Field. If you don't see this Device Command Sequences drop-down menu, or if it's blank on your system, you probably don't have motorized components on your scope. Once you've chosen Camera, Click the Live Image button to turn the camera on. If you still can't see an image, try turning up the light level on your microscope. You can also use this slider to send light either to the eyepieces or to the camera. Getting a live image is definitely one of the trickier things that you need to be able to do, so don't panic if it takes you a few minutes to get there the first time. Once you've got the live image, though, Go to the Workspace tab. Use this tab to open any windows that you might need for the session. We'll talk about those in other videos. If you look down at the bottom of the screen here, there's a little cheat sheet, a tooltip, that tells you what mode you're in or what you need to do next. If you ever find yourself stuck in the software, take a look at that and chances are it will tell you what to do. Right now it says move cursor and click to mark a reference point. The reference point is the first click that you make in the software. If you ever need to take your slide off and reopen the data file to look at the same slide again later, the reference point will help you do that. You can use the joystick to move around. You always want to make sure that you have the correct lens selected from this drop-down menu. Most modern microscopes will automatically detect that lens and update the drop-down menu accordingly, but a lot of older scopes won't. If you look at the bottom of your screen down here, it says move cursor and click to mark a reference point. The reference point is a great tool to help you realign your tracings and to allow you to work off the same slide over multiple sessions. Here's how it works. The first click that you make in the software is the reference point. The next time you come back to this same data file and the same slide, you'll mark the exact same reference point again and all your tracings should line up. Here I haven't placed the reference point yet. I'll use the joystick to move around and find a nice fiduciary mark, like the corner of the cover slip click to place your reference point. 
Depending on your settings, you may notice that the joystick has been disabled once you place the reference point. That's okay. Just choose Move and then Joy Track to re-enable it. Use the joystick to move around once again, and when you leave Joy Track mode by clicking on it again or pressing the Escape key on your keyboard, the reference point and all your tracings should move back to being exactly where they are on the slide. The reference point is essentially the 0, 0, 0 position, and all of your tracings and data are stored in the data file relative to that. Once you place the reference point, the Z-meter, that's the black bar on the side of the screen here, will start to update. And as you focus up or down in your tissue, you'll see it change. In Joy Track Mode, I'm going to use the joystick to move back over to my tissue. And then click on Joy Track again to return to normal mode. Down here, the toolbar says click on point to start mapping a contour. Contour mapping mode is the default mode that you're in in the software once a reference point is placed. Simply click and then click again to trace a contour around your tissue. There are a couple of options available here. You can right click and choose end open contour to end your contour as it is, or once you've finished tracing it and want to close it, you can right click and choose closed contour to close it. There are a couple of different tracing modes available. Simple click tracing is just a simple click by click tracing. Rubber line tracing is the same as simple click but has a nice little gray preview line. And continuous tracing is a click and drag tracing mode, sort of like paint or Photoshop. The trace tab over here contains more information about tracing. When you end an open contour or close a contour, you can use the select objects tool to select and edit contours. Notice that this contour that I traced in continuous tracing mode has lots more points, and it will take me a lot longer to edit that than this contour that I traced in rubber line mode. You can press the escape key on your keyboard or click on select objects again to leave the select objects tool. As you trace larger structures that take up multiple fields of view, you'll probably find yourself needing to move around. There are a few different ways to do that. The simplest way is to click on joy track and use the joystick to move. As before, when you click on Joy Track, your tracings should all go back to where they were before, and you can resume tracing. But there are a couple of other ways to do this as well. Click on the Move tab. Here, there are arrow buttons. The arrow keys in your keyboard will do the same thing. These will let you move around. By default, they move 25% of the current field of view, but click this little Options button and you can adjust that so they move an absolute distance in microns or a percent of your screen size. Perhaps the quickest and simplest way to move around though is auto move. Go to the workspace tab and then choose define auto move area. Click in the top left corner of your screen, not all the way up in the corner, but give yourself a little working room and then move your mouse all the way down and then click a second time. It's not a click and drag operation, it's two separate clicks to define the auto move box. Now, as I trace inside the auto move box, the screen won't move. But if you notice here, when I click outside the auto move box, the screen will move and center my tracings wherever I last clicked. You can always go to the workspace tab and click on auto move again to turn it back off. Sometimes you'll get really far away from where you started at and you'll need to get back there. You can move around with the joystick but it's often easy to get lost with the joystick, especially at high magnification. The macro view is this window over here, and it provides a nice overview of your entire data file. In the macro view, you can get around quickly by right-clicking, choosing Go To, and then clicking to center your screen on a point. Let's go back to the Edit tool for a minute and delete a couple of these contours. I'll choose the Trace ribbon, and then the edit tool is currently grayed out because I'm still tracing that contour. If I click here, it will trace a contour line that goes all the way from over here to here. To get rid of that, I can click on undo or press the control Z key on my keyboard. Then I can right click and choose end open contour. This type of thing happens all the time, so you can also press the escape key to get out of whatever mode you're in and return you to this main mode here where select objects is available. Now I can use the select objects tool to select 
and get rid of this extraneous contour. You get different options if you right click on a point versus if you right click in the empty space with a contour selected. These options apply just to the point that you've got selected, while these options apply to the entire selected contour. Here I'll choose the delete selected contour option to get rid of that contour. I'll now leave select objects mode and then move back to the reference point. Now I can save this data file by clicking on the save button here at the top of the screen. Type a file name and then click save. Now we can close the software and take this slide off. Let's say you come back the next day and you want to reopen that same file and pick up working where you left off. Remember the reference point? The reference point is what would let you do that. Down here at the bottom, it says move cursor to click and mark reference point. Mark the exact same reference point that you marked before, and then choose open data file. You can also pick file and then open and data file. Double click to open your data file and now use the macro view, just like we did before, right click, go to, and then click to center your screen on a point. Once the software moves to that location, all your tracings should be lined up. Of course, things aren't always perfect. If you're not super careful about how you place that reference point, you might see alignment issues, like this. Don't worry though, this is pretty easy to fix. There are two ways to do it. Up here in the toolbar, I'll click on Joy Free Mode. Unlike Joy Track, Joy Free allows you to use the joystick to align your tracings. Move around, and then once you're happy with the alignment, click on the Joy Free button again to leave Joy Free Mode. Unlike Joy Track Mode, your tracings aren't going to move after you leave Joy Free Mode. The other way to fix problems like this is with Align Tracing. Enter Align Tracing Mode, Click on your tracings, and then click where they should be. Click, and then click again. It's two separate clicks. If you forget where these alignment tools or any other tools are, don't worry. The Quick Launch feature is a really handy new feature in version 2017 that allows you to search for anything. Here, I'll type in Align. And then you'll see that Align Tracing and Joy Free Mode both show up. You can click on them right here and then use them to align your tracings. Now Joy Free and Align Tracing work really, really well to move around your reference point and help you realign tracings. But if the problem that you see is your tracings shifting as you try to trace, that's something else. Let's say you're tracing, and you click outside the Auto Move box. In theory, your tracings should stay lined up, but here we can see that they've shifted. and every time I move they shift further. This problem can't be fixed with Joy Free Mode or with Align Tracing. This is more likely to be a calibration issue. 99% of the time it's just camera stage alignment, but sometimes it's worth re-grid tuning your lenses as well. There are links to tutorial videos on camera stage alignment and on grid tuning or recalibrating your lenses below this video. I'd like to talk about just a couple of commonly used options in the software. The first of these is Fit Video in Window. From the File menu, choose Hardware Setup, and then Camera, and then check or uncheck Fit Video in Window. With this option turned off, one pixel on the camera is one pixel on your monitor. This works great as long as your camera and your monitor are similar resolutions, but here I've got a very high resolution camera on a lowish resolution monitor, so the image ends up looking far, far too large. In this case, I'll want to turn Fit Video Window on to shrink my image and be able to see the entire field of view that the camera sees. Note that having dockable windows, like image adjustment here, docked on the side of the screen will cause your image to be resized, and you may see black bars on either the bottom or the side of your screen. That's okay, those crop bars are the same thing as a 4x3 TV displaying a 16x9 image. We want to keep the same aspect ratio that your tissue actually is to give you an image that looks good, and so we'll scale up or down the camera image to show you the entire field of view of the camera at the original aspect ratio. If you have extra black space, you can always dock these windows there just by clicking and dragging them, or 
leave them undocked like this to have extra space. Having the joystick disabled once you have a reference point set is often great because it means you don't accidentally bump the joystick and then move around. But a lot of people like to have the joystick turned on all the time. If you go to File, Hardware Setup, Stage, Settings, XY Stage Setup, you can turn on this option, Joy Track Always On. With that option enabled, you can trace, use the joystick at any time, and as soon as you let go of the joystick, your tracings will snap back to where they should be. This is a great way to trace across multiple fields of view very quickly. Another nice option that's very handy if you do a lot of fluorescent work is the theme. If you choose File, Preferences, Interface Theme, you can toggle between the light theme, which is what I'm using here, and the dark theme that looks like this. The dark theme works really, really well in dark rooms because it makes it easier to see the buttons. There's one final option that I'd like to talk about, and that's mouse wheel focus. By default, the scroll wheel on your mouse changes the size of the circular cursor. It means as you trace, you can adjust the thickness of lines using the scroll wheel. But some people would rather focus with that, and this makes a lot of sense, especially if you're working from image stacks. Choose File, Preferences, Mouse Wheel, turn on Focus with Mouse Wheel, and set the distance per click in microns. Now, as I scroll up and down, you can see the Z-meter updating. You can always hold the control key to toggle between these two modes without needing to go into options.